Sometimes we want to make use of Scrapey's great features, but we don't want to run the full start project command. We don't want to deal with all the extra files. We just want the core utility that we can work with. In that case, we can use the crawler process and we can actually run spiders from within a single script file. And in this video, I'm going to expand on that and we're going to run multiple spiders, one after the other, from the same script. And I'll talk about the benefits of that as we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, scrape some products. I'm going to keep the actual scraping itself quite minimal um, but there's going to be four different spiders that we're going to run i'll run through the first one and i'll just fill in the second third and fourth so you understand you don't have to watch me type out a load of stuff that is pointless so the idea behind this is using the crawler process so if i come to the scrapey documentation and the crawler process we'll see here that under common practices we have this here now this is basically what we're going to do except we're going to flesh this out much much more um, but it will essentially be able to run we're going to call this from a single script file the benefits of that is that we can it makes it a lot more portable we can just push this script to whatever server we want and we can just run it and we can have use of all the scrapey's great features we will need to configure the settings down here though so i'll fill you that all in in that second so let's do python 3 dash mv mv vmv inside your project file because in your project folder to create a virtual environment i'm going to activate it this is a shortcut for me you need to do source uh, venv bin activate uh, for linux and mac and i'm not sure what it is on windows so we're going to do pip3 install scrapey the proxies we are going to be using are from Proxy Scrape, sponsor of this video and friends of the channel. Over the last year or so, I've sent countless amounts of gigabytes of data through Proxy Scrape, and it's the proxies that I use in my personal projects. As we know, proxies are an integral part of scraping data, and with Proxy Scrape, we have access to high quality, secure, fast, and ethically sourced proxies that are perfect for our scraping use case. I almost exclusively use the residential ones, as these are the best option for beating any anti-bot protection on the sites we're scraping, and with the auto-rotation, we're able to scale up our scraping solutions with ease. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use, all with unlimited concurrent sessions, so adding proxies to our project is simple and extremely effective when combined with any scraping code, but especially asynchronous requests like we're going to be using here. You'll have a choice of country two for helping when working on very region specific sites. There's a 99% success rate and traffic that never expires, which is also very nice. Other options though, if you just want throughput, then the data sensor proxies with unlimited bandwidth, 99% uptime and no rate limit from reputable countries and IP authentication make them a very easy and attractive option within the right use case. So go ahead and check out Proxy Scrape at the link in the description below. Now on with our project. And now that's done, instead of doing scrapey start projects like this, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to create a pi file. So we'll do touch and we'll call this main.py. I'm going to open this in my text editor. I'm going to copy this code and we're going to start with it here. I'm going to save this and we're going to go ahead now and start filling in some of the settings that we're going to need because we don't have that main settings file with all the defaults within it for um, when we create a scrapey project, we're going to need to add in some important settings at the bottom here inside our crawler process. So I put these settings in. I want to explain what they are. Obviously, user agent is a standard one. We are going to need a user agent. The next one is the request fingerprint implementation as standard. This is 2.7 now, but if you don't specify this, it will run on 2.6 within scrapey, which will give you some errors. Feed export encoding of UTF-8, so we actually, any special characters will work properly when we export them, because we are going to be exporting them to JSON. I put the DNS timeout at 120 because we're going to be using proxies for this, and I have my robots obey at false, and we want to make sure that we are using the twisted async selector reactor. This is the best one, I think, in my opinion, and we want to make sure we use this. This is default within scraping now, but again, if we don't specify it, we're not going to be using it. So these are the settings that I'm going to be using in this instance. So what do we have then? Well, we essentially have some a standard spider here, and we want to be able to run this when we run this when we run this script. And this is exactly what the process crawl and process start is. So what we can do is, you know, if we were to create <clears throat> some more of these, like this. Obviously, we're going to need to give them different names. Like this, let's have four. Like so. And let's we'll give them different names. We can call them all down here just by duplicating this line, uh, this one, 
like so. And this will run them one after the other, but we do need to actually fill these in. These are spiders. So let's go ahead and start creating this one. So I'm gonna call this one Banana Spider to reference the first website that we're gonna be scraping. And what we need to do is we need to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this name. And we need to create our request. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a start request. This is a standard uh, scrapey function. I keep doing that, I don't need that. I don't need all of this, we don't need this. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, instead of returning, we're gonna be yielding requests. So I'm gonna say that our URL um, URLs is gonna be equal to whatever our URLs are. And then we'll do for URL in URLs because we can we wanna be able to supply a single one or a list if we want to start requests for all of them. We're gonna yield out scrapey.start, um, not start request, what is it? Scrapey.request. And then we say our URL is equal to the URL that we're going to be running over. And the callback is going to be self.pass item, like so. And then we'll have our define our pass, pass item, which is going to have the um, self and obviously the response so we can do something with it like so. So this is the basic shell of the spider that we want to create. Now there's a couple of things I want to change. We do want to add in our proxy here. So to do that I'm going to import OS because mine is uh, saved into an environment variable. So under the yield scrapey request just in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this meta dictionary and I'm going to say our proxy it's going to be equal to os.get env yep. and the proxy. So this is an environment variable stored on my machine. Um, and I need to then put this comma back in here like this. Again, if you need proxies, check out the link in the description. This is, these are the ones that I'll be, the proxy scrape ones are the ones that I will be using in this video. Uh, I've just got mine saved. This is how often I use them. They're stored in an environment variable, so I can call them whenever I need them, uh, which is most of the time, if not all of the time when I'm scraping data. So now we've got the basic shell out. We need to think about what we're gonna do with, with the items that we scrape, because if we start to um, take different bits of data from the different websites, which we're gonna fill in with these spiders down here a bit later on, we want to, we're gonna end up with mismatched uh, fields across our file. Now that's not an issue, but you'd have to, but ideally what you want is to have all of the same fields. So basically you have the same data set that you can then compare and contrast or whatever it is you wanna do with. So we are gonna use a scrapey item and I'm also gonna use the item loader. Now these are very common things to use within scrapey. The item is essentially scrapey's way of holding the data. It's a much like a Python dictionary. Um, but it you know, gets passed around all the various functions. And the item loader is a convenient way to take the raw HTML from the response and to transform that data into the uh, required format to go into our item, depending on how we choose to do so. So I'm gonna create the item now. We're gonna keep it very simple as an example. So what we're gonna do is we'll have our item at the top and we'll call this uh, product. So this is our product, and this is gonna be a scrapey dot item like so. Now we're gonna say we wanna have a name, which is gonna be a scrapey.field. And we'll have a price, and we might as well have a URL as well, which we will take from the uh, response. So we're gonna get only a couple of bits of data, but um, you know this could be fleshed out as much as you need it to for whatever items you're scraping. And again, this is gonna be consistent. So we're gonna have these three fields for each, um, each spider that we run. So we get the same data across each one. So let's go ahead and import the, the, uh, the item loader so we can then you know figure out what we're gonna be doing with that. Let's import the item loader. So from scrapey.loader import item loader there it is and we also need the processors so we can actually do something with this so from item loaders dot processors import map compose and take first so map compose allows us to run a function against each field as the data comes in and take first is basically just taking the first instance it finds of the matching element which is going to work for us in this case we're also going to need from w3 lib.html we're going to import in remove 
tags. The reason why I'm using the item loader, and I don't always use it, but in this case, we're going to have to, we would have to duplicate quite a lot of work. Whereas if we use the loader, we can basically just give it the selector that we found for each of the fields and it will do the rest for us because we're going to specify the data up here. So we'll have our input processor is going to be equal to map compose and remove tags like so. And then our output, I need to correct that output processor. I'm just going to fill this in. It's going to be equal to uh, take first like this. I need to figure out my map compose needs to change. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put this into each one here. So this is going to remove the tags from our uh, element and then take the first one and it's basically going to return us the text for these elements and it's going to input this into each of these fields. Now I don't actually think we're going to need it in here because this is going to come from the actual uh, response itself so we don't need that but what we are going to need to do is we're going to need to tackle some white space so when we actually get this data back we don't have a load of new lines and a load of blank stuff and the easiest way to do that is to create our own function to clean the data given as well that we're already using map compose we can say hey remove tags and then do our function so I'm going to call this one um, remove white space and this basically it means that we don't have to do any of this when we're actually in the spider itself um, and we need to have a value is going to come in here and then we're going to return out the value and we're going to do um, dot strip and we'll also do dot replace uh, this is a very common one that I do any new lines like so then this just needs to go in here so remove tags and then also remove white space so you can see how you can easily build up um, your data um, being cleaned a little bit here. Um, if you have a lot of stuff, not that one, remove. If you're doing a lot of data processing though, you're much better off putting it into a pipeline, which if you're going to be using pipelines and things like that, you probably want to use a full scraping project. Um, but this is just a nice, neat way of doing this. And again, we get the benefits of making a single pi file, which is much more portable. So now I have the item set up. I know that the fields that I want are here that I'm going to get. We're going to do a little bit of data processing on them to handle this. We're going to add this into each spider. So before we add in our item into the pass item, I'm just going to remove, I'll leave them for now actually. Before we do that, we want to actually check out the site. We want to get the URL, which I'm going to grab here. I'm going to paste it into here. So this is our starting URL. Now we can obviously add in extra ones for this site if we wanted to, but we're going to be able to just grab the data from this main page. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go inspect here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to grab this piece of information here. Um, there's lots of different ways of, of, of grabbing product information. I just generally, if I'm looking at it, I'll go to the source code first, but I know that we can just, because we're just after the product name, this should be quite simple. So here, so we want to go, oh, here we go. That's the whole thing, product item info. So this is going to be the main dip. So you see how that's all highlighted on the, on, the, on the website on the left. That's the main sort of product bit that we want to go through. So what we're going to do here is for item, uh, I'm not going to call this item, oh, we will call it item, it's fine. For item in response.css, and we give it our, this was a div, I think. We need to give it this, like so. We can now loop through each of those products and create the item and load it out. So I'm going to do our IL is going to be equal to our item loader. We're going to take in the item, which is going to be equal to the product. This is the product we created at the top. We want to put all of our data into here. And our selector is going to be equal to item. Because we're going to go through every single one of these here, this is then becoming the selector that we want to pull the data from. So our item here, this variable, is going to be storing a selected piece of um, response data CSS that we're using. So this is what we want to do. So from here, we want to create our actual, we'll do il.add CSS. And we want to put this into the name field. And then I'm going to grab the selector in just a minute for that. Let's copy this. There should be another one of these, which is going to go into the price field. And this is where the benefit of using the item loader really comes in because it just makes this a little bit easier. And I think we use add value here. And this is the URL. And we want the response dot URL like so. Let's grab these selectors real quick for the name. 
Okay, so this is uh, a, a with a class product, product item link, and this has the data in. You can actually see here, just underneath me, that there's the, the white spaces around this product. So this is going to be A, it's going to be A, and this here. And then the price for this one is here. Span class price. Nice and easy. Cool. So that's essentially it. This is how we're going to get the item. Oh, we need to yield this out, actually. My bad. We need to yield il.load uh, item. So it loads it into the item class and returns that item class to us. So this is essentially it. This is a nice, short, and concise spider that's going to run just on this single page. Of course, you can add in as much detail, as much complexity into the spider as you need, even when you're running it through a script like this. And then basically what we want to do is we can duplicate this for any of the other sites that match that we want to do for our our uh, name and price and field. In this case, we're looking at climbing apparatus. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we'll just remove these because otherwise our code will fail to run. So we'll put our banana spider in here and we're gonna save this. And now we're just gonna run this in Py main. And we'll see that we do have all of the standard scrapey stuff going on here. We have our logging, we have our uh, everything going on, including running through our proxy and the settings that we've created. So we can see it's worked here. I have some name and we have the URL. Let's just come back in a list for some reason. Of course, the URL is gonna be just the main URL. It's not really what we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna correct that. Otherwise, you know, that's no use to anyone really. So let's come back here. And instead of a response URL, um, in fact, we'll leave it like this because at least it tells us what URL it came from so we know what site it is. So that's essentially how we do it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab, go ahead and fill in the other spiders and we'll see them running all together and we'll talk about it a little bit there too. Okay, so I've added in the extra spiders. It's basically the same thing. We're using the same uh, item loader that we create here, doing exactly kind of the same thing. Uh, different websites, obviously. So we can end up with a list of data, which is gonna be across all of these different sites. Obviously these one sites have different selectors, so you have to manage that. Um, but this is quite a cool way of doing it all. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save and close out of this. And what we're gonna do is, we are gonna run this now and we'll say we want the, um, we're gonna remove our items file and we're gonna run it again with our pi at main. And because we're running it as a script with that setting that says it's already at exporting it to items.json, we don't need to run any extra parameters because that obviously wouldn't work. That only works within the code itself. Now we can see that it's running each spider one after the other. And uh, this is exactly what we wanted to do. So we can easily crawl multiple sites from one Py file. You could have as many spiders as you want in there. Um, we actually had an error, but uh, let's come have a look at our, our items. So we have the data here. So you can see this is the first site that we have. Uh, here's another one and another one and so on and so forth. We're missing one. Oh, there it is. There's just not many. There's just not many that many products on that one. So we have four sites, four lots of data which we've grabbed um, here, as you can see. Now they are separated by uh, list function, but that's fine. This is valid JSON, um, or it will be once it's been passed into valid JSON. And uh, we'll be able, we could import this, put it anywhere we wanted to. We could import this to a database. We could load it. And obviously, you're probably going to have a lot more bits of data than I do here. So all in all, this is a really good way of actually running a spider or running multiple spiders through a single Py file. And again, the benefits of this means that this is nice and easy for us to port. We could take this single file, install Scrapey on our server, and we could just run this as often as we needed to to pull this data in. And of course, you can have any feed that you like. You can run anything that you need. It just all has to go within this Py file. If you found this interesting and you want to know how to run more complicated Scrapey programs, then you want to watch this video next where I do just that, scraping over 150,000 items.